Hi, my name is Charlie Kerr. I'm the singer of Hotel Mira. This is our new album, Perfectionism. And you're watching In Conversation with Joe Leary. Charlie Kerr, brand new album. You must be proud as hell. Yeah, um, we really are of this one. It's a uh, whole kind of different animal from anything else we've ever done. Perfectionism. Are you a perfectionist? I am, sadly. Why do you say sadly? Because I think that it's a very glorified term for what it is. It's uh, fear of putting a single foot wrong mm -hmm. is a fear of abandonment. Mm -hmm. If you get down to it, it's just like, if I don't do absolutely every single thing right all the time, everybody's going to leave me. And at the same time, we're told so many stories about perfectionist artists and we celebrate them for it. And to me, it's just, it's kind of a terrifying condition. And it's kind of strange that we celebrate it so much. I've learned a lot about you without actually knowing you. I think I know you quite well from what you post. And I've learned that you're deep and you're introspective <laughs> and you're insightful and you've Thank got you. attitudes and you care about a lot of causes. I do. Were you always this guy? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Like, quite honestly, I think that, like, um, when I was, like, when I was 10, I did a for my book report, I did a biography on Malcolm X. Oh, Jesus. And then, <laughs> and then I did Probably one, the only one in the class. And then I did one on Martin Luther King wow. Jr. as well. Yeah. Like, I've always really, um, I guess, related with big-time idealists. And then I got into Bob Dylan and, and uh, John Lennon by way of the Beatles and these people who, uh, you know, kind of uh, spoke up for things that they cared about. And... I remember, yeah, being a teenager and like starting a band, and I guess probably being into like Rage Against the Machine and and, and kind of and and even uh, and even the things that like Kurt stood for in Nirvana or like Kathleen Hanna and Bikini Kill. It was like, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just to me that and music kind of always went together, it, like. It, you're standing for something. Yeah, so you were inspired by people that had a message in their music as opposed to just writing a bunch of things that kind of sound cool in a lyric. Yeah, and, and like, and my folks kind of encouraged that. Like, m my mom and dad are both um, uh, deep feelers and, and generous and, like, made sure to teach me and my brother about empathy. Right. And so pretty, pretty early on, my folks were teaching me about like different things in the world and how they were objectively unfair and what we could do about it. I had the chance to catch you guys on stage. You're very charismatic. Thank you. Which I think is an essential for a good front man of, of any band. But I kind of got the, I don't want to go off in the deep end here, but mm -hmm. I kind of got you kind of like your Mick meets Mercury yeah. in terms of your showmanship. Is That's that fair? Cool. Yeah. I mean, Will you take that? I love both those guys. Um, <laughs> And like, as I get a bit older, I think that like, that shows up a tiny bit more. Definitely when I was younger, um, it was so much more self-destructive. It was so much closer to an Iggy Pop or yeah. even Jim Morrison. Like, I've ended three different shows with blood coming out of my head and I don't want to do that anymore. Wow. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, I used to like... So a real performance per artist. Yeah, performing was this thing where it was like, I loved it so much because it was this like IV to attention and affection and people finally telling me that I belonged and I was in the right place. And, and it felt like my only purpose. So by nature of that, it was, I kind of just got on stage every night like a sacrificial lamb. Like everything that happens to me tonight is for your entertainment. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's unsustainable. So now it's this kind of more nuanced thing that, yeah, like is, is pretty theatrical, pretty, pretty Freddy, pretty Mick. You are of proud Métis heritage. I am. 
and I know that you had occasion recently to be in Alberta yeah. to speak. Mm -hmm. How was that experience? As Yeah, I was a keynote speaker uh, to kind of events in a row for the Métis Nation of Alberta. Um, it was incredible, man. Like, it was, when I think back to like being a kid and what I wanted to do with my platform, it's like exactly in line with that. And I also worked um, uh, talking at and um, performing at high schools with a company called, or an organization rather, called Reach Out Psychosis. I'd go talk about mental health, right. and, you know, kind of what I'd been through. Um, doing that as well and, and giving back to that community and then in particular giving back to my own Métis community it just kind of feels right and on on a level that is um, can't really describe it mm -hmm. it's like almost like spiritually and like genetically it feels right to be doing what I can now you got a couple things on your on your uh, canvas, you uh, you sing. Mm -hmm. I know you act. Yeah. Your performance, your artistry is very focused. On the acting side, can you do anything? Can you play any role, or do you have a type? Um, I think uh, I'd like to think that I've got uh, uh, range, um, but because uh, um, yeah, I played a lot of different things. But um, the recurring theme is like. Um, really troubled people yeah and i'm happy to do that and, right. and yeah and people with mental illness as well and again i'm happy to do it and i'm happy to now that i'm in a good place i can play those roles really pretty safely i can show you what it looks like without hurting myself right. and you know and it's accurate like because i've been there but if the call comes in for super bad too or some Meatballs four. Could could you jump into that? I would love to. Yeah. You know, like I love Mel Brooks movies. I love Super Bad. Like I, I, you probably can't tell from this interview, but like humor is. There's um, there's a lighter side to Charlie yeah, Kirk. It's a major right right part of uh, the whole package. Okay, let's get back to the uh, the new record. Cool. Uh, your fans have only just been hearing this for a couple days. Yeah, like. 28 hours. Okay, only? 20, 20 yeah, and like count, that. but who's counting? Right? Yeah. Okay, so is there some sort of like nerves when you go to perform these songs? I mean, because fans of artists basically sing the music back yeah. to you, which has got to be the most, the strongest compliment any anybody could receive is to have people know your stuff. It's, it's why I feel a commitment to go so deep, because when I wrote really kind of candidly uh, on the earlier records and I didn't even know that that's what I was doing. It right. just came naturally. Um, it was it was really celebrated and then and then that exchange is like there's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like and finding out that um, my music could help people through things and stuff. So I take it seriously um, and um, but I'm really excited for this one to uh, to not be mine anymore, and, and for people to project whatever they want onto the songs. I saw you stream something the other day, and you had literally just released the album, and people are asking, like, when's the next one coming out? Dude, I just put this one out. Like, just relax, <laughs> right? But I guess that's what the fans want. It's it's flattering. Like, that's that's the best way I can put something like that. Like, I could get pissed off and be like fuck you, you don't know what this like mm. took out of me, but yeah. like, then I'm ignoring how phenomenally like blessed and lucky I am that like somebody would be that ravenous for yeah. my material. And then I go into a zone to kind of get grateful, which is just like, that's how I, that's how I'd feel um, in regards to like, my favorite artists like Frank Ocean and St. Vincent and stuff, like I want them to be, you know, if, if something dropped tomorrow, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd drop everything I was doing to listen to it. So if they feel that way about me, like that's, that's cool. Like I can live with that. He's playing through pain because he's sporting fresh ink. I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's that, what's that going to be? Um, it is the, uh, it's the Statue of Liberty's okay. torch yeah. and her hand. Yeah. Um, it's like uh, it's a combination of my love for 
New York, and um, there's a Billy Ray Belcour poem, and he's one of my favorite writers. He's a uh, indigenous writer, and he uh, the quote is, uh, "Femininity is the torch only the bravest men carry." You're a deep guy. Man, that's kind of you to say. I don't really think so. No, I do. I, I do think so. Okay. Uh, Charlie Kerr, I've enjoyed this, man. Enjoy it a lot. Thanks. Cheers. Appreciate it.